Hello, this is Kamal with the Elastic Team. This video covers color features. We'll talk about what gets computed by the color feature group, how to visualize the result, and how to choose the right size features for your data set. I've already loaded this data set, which I created expressly for this video. I've already created labels for the background and for each circle, and marked up a few pixels. Let's select the color group features at three different sizes. Now I can visualize the result by clicking on the Add Overlay button. Each feature that I computed is available here. So the color group only contains Gaussian smoothing. At the smallest sigma level, or the smallest neighborhood, there's very little smoothing. So all of that noise in the data set is still visible. But as the window gets larger, the noise starts to disappear at the cost of some blurring. So at the very largest, these smaller circles are almost blurred away. Now that you've seen what's been computed for each pixel, three features per pixel, let's see how the results look. Almost perfect, as you would expect in this simple data set. But what happens if I remove the smaller features and only use the GigaHuge features, which, as you saw, were much bigger than the smallest circles and almost smeared them away? Well, as you would expect, those smaller circles are completely gone. So this feature is very nice for smoothing away the noise, but we can't just use this feature alone because the finer details that we're so interested in, these smaller circles, have been lost. Now if I only choose the smallest features, a different effect occurs. Now it picks up the smaller circles, but a lot of the noise hasn't been smoothed away, so the classifier is confused at these pixels and thinks they belong in a circle, and thinks that these pixels belong in the background. So now that I've demonstrated the color features on this simple toy data set, let's see the same thing on a real cell image. This image was taken from the Cell Center database. It depicts a rat's cerebellum, stained with three different stains. So unlike the previous image, which was a grayscale image, we really do have three color channels here. So the, I want to make the point that even though this feature is called color features, it's still relevant also for grayscale images because it's calculated on each channel separately. Again, I've already created some labels and marked up some pixels. Now if I select only the GigaHuge features, start live prediction and look at the results. As you would expect, even though it looks very smooth because it, the finer detail has been blurred away, the areas that are very small are, are lost. So in here, for instance, it's hard to differentiate at this level of smoothing between these different membranes because a lot of that detail has been blurred away. So if I add some of the smaller features and recompute, the result looks much nicer. So that's it for color features. Thanks for listening.